All right, what's going on everybody? This video, we're gonna look at applications of partial derivatives. So in the previous video, we learned how to find partial derivatives. Now we're gonna do some applications. So I won't be explaining as much as finding the partial derivative. Okay, this is just more about the applications and how to solve the applications. If you, if you need a video that's more detail on finding partial derivatives, watch the video before this one and you can search my channel applied calculus partial derivatives all right so let's go ahead and get started all right so in an earlier section or an earlier video if you're watching the videos uh, in an earlier section the differential for a function of one independent variable was defined to be dy equals f prime of x dx. Okay, we, we did a lesson on differentials earlier with one independent variable. In a similar manner, we define the total differential, the total differential of a function z equals f of x y to be dz is equal to the partial of z with respect to x times dx plus the partial of z with respect to y times dy all right so let's so basically all you're doing is you're taking the partial with respect to x times dx the partial with respect to y times dy and we should know how to do this at this point okay all right so let's look at some examples. So it says find the total differential. All right, so we get, we get dz is equal to, now we're gonna take the partial with respect to x. So that means we treat y as a constant. So that's gonna be three x squared y plus two x y squared minus nine, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, minus three y cubed, all right? So the three comes down, subtract one from the exponent. The two comes down, subtract one from the exponent. And this is just an x term, so the three and the y cubed is a constant, so that's just three y cubed. And then all of that is times dx, all right? Now we have the partial with respect to y, okay? So that's gonna be plus, so that's gonna be x cubed. Y is the variable, x cubed is a constant. And then we have the two comes down, the two, the exponent two on the y. So that's gonna be uh, plus two x squared y and then minus, and then this one, the three comes down, so that's nine x y squared, and then that is times dy. And this is your total differential. All right, all right, let's look at another one. And the good thing about this, this part is, well, the good thing of all of this, we're getting more practice on finding partial derivatives. So we have dz is equal to, all right, so let's take the partial with respect to x. So that's, see this cosine 2y? That's a number. That's a, we treat that as a constant, the whole thing, cosine 2y. So we take the derivative of this. That's e to the negative x times the derivative of the exponent. What's the derivative of negative x? Negative 1. And then we've got times cosine 2y. See, cosine 2y is just a number. And then minus, now we take the derivative of natural log xy. So whenever you're taking the derivative of natural log, whatever you're taking the natural log of, that goes in the denominator. And then the derivative of this goes in the numerator. So we're taking the partial with respect to x. So the derivative of xy is just y. And then all of that is times dx. And then we've got plus, all right, so now we're taking the partial with respect to y. So e to the negative x is treated like a number. This is cosine 2y. So 
What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine times the derivative of what you're taking the cosine of. So the derivative of 2y is 2, and then that's times e to the negative x. And then we've got minus, and then derivative of natural log xy. The xy goes in the denominator. The derivative of this goes in the numerator, so the derivative of xy would just be x because we're taking the derivative with respect to y, and then that's times dy. And then we can make this look a little better. So that's dz is equal to, that's going to be negative e to the negative x cosine 2y minus 1 over x dx. And I guess we can just leave it as plus, I guess. So that's going to be negative e, I'm sorry, negative 2e to the negative x sine 2y minus 1 over y times dy. And that is our answer there. All right, so hopefully all of that made sense. This is your answer. So, I mean, think about it. All, all we're doing is you're taking the partial with respect to x and then multiplying it times dx. And then plus, then you're taking the partial with respect to y and multiplying that times dy. All right. All right. So let's look at this example. It says the power P in watts delivered by delivered to a resistor of resistance R in ohms is an electric circuit in an electric circuit is given by P equals I squared R. So there's our function there. Where, where I is the current in amps, find the approximate change in power if the current changes from 4.0 amps to 4.1 and the resistance changes from 22 ohms to 22.4. All right, so find the approximate change. So we're going to have to find the total differential here. So we've got P equals I squared R. So we're gonna we're gonna do this the like we did the two problems earlier. We need to find the we need to find the total differential first. Okay. All right. So we've got DP is equal. So I'm gonna take the partial with respect to I first. So this capital R, that's treated like a constant. So that's 2i times R times what? DI. Plus, and then the partial with respect to R. So I squared is a constant. So that's just I squared times DR. All right. Now, what do we have to do? Well, we've got to figure out what are we going to plug in for each of these? Well, let's see. All right, so I starts out at 4. So we know I is equal. And let me do this in a different color or a little bit lighter color. I equals 4. Okay. And then I have DI. Well, it changes from 4 to 4.1. So that's 4.1 minus 4, which is 0.1. And then big R, well, that changes from 22 to 22.4. So R is 22. And then DR is 22.4 minus 22, which equals 0.4. And so now you just take each of these values here and plug them into the total differential. So I get dp is equal to, so that's going to be 2 times 4 times, let's see, 2 times i times r times 22 times di, so times 0.1, plus, and then i squared, that's going to be 4 squared times dr, which is 0.4. 
All right. And when we punch all of this into our calculator, we end up with 24 watts. And there's your answer. All right. So, you know, this problems work just like the first two. The only the only thing we had to really do different was we had to figure out what we needed to plug in. All right. All right. Let's look at another one. It says a conical funnel with a very small opening was to be was to be made such that the diameter across the top was 10 centimeters and the depth was 6 centimeters. However, the diameter was made only 9.8 centimeters and the depth 5.8 centimeters. What was the resulting percentage error in the volume of liquid the funnel will hold? All right. So, so let's look and see what we... Uh, what we got here. So let's, I guess we can draw a picture of this thing first. So let's draw a picture. Just kind of see what we have here. So, so this is going to be the, the cone here. And that's going to be five because it said, it said the diameter was 10. So we'll label the radius as five. And then we've got the height here. This would be the height. And well, I guess we can we can label uh, let's label that radius, which you know for the big one it's five. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to draw in the one that's All right, so so this right here would be your dr, and this right here would be dh. That, that's why I changed it to r and h, so I could show you this is the this is the dr, your error in radius, and this would be your error in height. Okay. All right, so let's. <clears throat> Let's see what we got. So it was it was actually made as 5.8 and 9.8, a diameter of 9.8 and a height of 5.8. So let's let's look at the volume. So we know the volume is one third pi r squared times h. That's the volume of the cone. Okay. So let's take the differential here. So I've got dv is equal to, so let's take the partial with respect to r first. So everything's a constant but the r, so the 2 comes down, so that's going to be 2 thirds pi r, subtract 1 from the exponent, h times dr, plus, and then I'm going to take the partial with respect to h. So all of this is a constant, the pi, the 1 third pi r squared. So the der derivative of one third pi r squared times h is just one third pi r squared and then times dh. All right, so what do I have to do here? Well, I have to figure out what dv, well, I gotta figure out what dv is, so I need to know r, h, dr, and dh. That's all the stuff I need to know. All right. So we've got R is equal to one. All right, so R is five. That's what it was going to be originally, right? And let me do it in a different color too. So R is equal to five. And then I have DR is what? Well, that's... 4.9 minus 5, right? Because it was made to be 9.8. So 9.8 divided by 2, that's where we get the 4.9 from. 
And you know, you might be wondering, well, you're doing 4.9 minus 5. Why not 5 minus 4.9? Well, notice in here that notice here it went from 4 to 4.1. So we did the 4.1 minus 4. Okay. And then here it it was at 22, but then it changed to 22.4. Notice how these values increased. Well, what's happening here is if you look, it was supposed to be at 5, the radius, but it's at 4.9. So it went from 5 to 4.9. It decreased, right? So we're doing 4.9 minus 5, which is negative 0.1. And then our height, h, that was supposed to be 6. Yeah, 6 centimeters. And so dh, well, what did it do? It went from 6 to 5.8. So that's going to be 5.8 minus 6, which is negative 0.2. Okay. And so now let's plug all this in. So I've got dv is equal to 2 thirds pi times r times h times dr, which is negative 0.1 plus one-third times, times pi times r squared, so times five squared, times dh, which is negative 0.2. And when I calculate all of that, I get negative 11.5, and that would be centimeters cubed. Okay. All right. So, what what is it that they're wanting us that they're wanting to know? Well, it says what was the resulting percentage error in the volume of liquid the funnel will hold? All right. So remember the the percentage area, the percentage error is hundred times dv over v. That's what we're looking for. All right, it's the change in volume divided by the actual volume. So we need to know what V is. Well, V, well, remember, V is one-third pi r squared. So that's one-third times pi times five squared times six, right? That was, that was the original volume. See, the radius is five because it tells us, where is it? The diameter is 10 and the height is six. And so this ends up giving us, um, well, it's what, 50 pi cubic centimeters. So now we have the 100 times dV over V is equal to 100 times negative 11.5 over 50 pi, which would be negative 7.3 percent that's the percentage error all right so there we work some uh, applications of differentials with in two variables all right all right now let's look at the next thing the next type of application so if you remember back when back when you learned how to graph remember when you found increasing decreasing relative max and min all that good stuff well we have these we have these functions here of two variables and you got a function f of x y and we want to find the relative maximum and minimum points so this is how you do it. It says if for a function f of x, y at a point a, b, the partial of f with respect to x is equal to zero and the partial of f with respect to y is equal to zero. Okay, And also d is equal to the second partial of f with respect to x times the second partial of f with respect to y minus the second partial of f with respect to x and then with respect to y. That's D. 
then there is a relative maximum at AB if D is positive, if this is positive, and the second partial of F with respect to X, this right here, just this term, is negative. Or a relative minimum at AB if D is positive and the second partial of F with respect to X is positive. So in each case, notice D, D is positive. But to determine if it's a relative max or min, okay, it's based on the second partial of F. If it's negative, it's a relative maximum. If it's positive, it's a relative minimum. And then if D is negative, there is neither a maximum nor a minimum. And if D is equal to zero, the test fails. All right, so we got a couple of problems here where we're going to find relative max and mins. We got this one, and then we have uh, a little application problem to do. And it, we're going to, the way that we work the problem, it's going to be the same. We're going to find relative max and mins in both of them. Okay, so I'm going to give you two examples, and one being in a, as an application. All right, so examine this function for relative maximum and minimum points. So first, let's just let me just write the the function down here plus two x y plus two y squared minus four x. All right. So now let's let's just go back up and see what we gotta have. Notice, notice we've got to have the first partial with respect to x and with respect to y. Then we've got to have the, set, the second partials with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to x, and then y. So what I like to do first is I like to just find all the partial derivatives first. Okay, let's, let's just do that. All right, so I've got the partial of z with respect to x. So that's 2x plus 2y minus 4. And all right, so hopefully you see how we did that. This is a constant, so that goes to 0. All right, and then I have the partial of z with respect to y. And so this is 0. This is 2x plus 4y. And then this, the, deriv the derivative of this is zero. All right. So there's your partials with respect to x and with respect to y. Now, I say I like to go ahead and find all the partials first. Let me just kind of take that back just one time. Uh, let's do this first, I guess, before we, um, before we do these partial, these, the second partials. Notice what it says up here that we need to set each one of these partials here equal to zero and solve for x and y. All right, so let's, let's do that. So I've got 2x plus 2y minus 4 equals zero, and I've got 2x plus 4y equals zero. Now, I'll say this in, in all, I mean, in this case, we ended up with x and y in both both of the equations. That's not going to always happen. Sometimes you're going to be left with just x. Sometimes you'll be left with just a y. And then you can solve for x, solve for y. Okay, it makes it easy. In other words, in other words, you in some of them you may not have this. You may have something like like this right here, and then you just you know you get x equal two. Okay, it just didn't happen in this problem. So. Let's put, put back the plus 2y. So this one makes it just, I mean, it's not difficult to solve. It makes it a little more difficult. we got system of equations, two equations, two unknowns. So we got to solve that. Hopefully you remember how to do that. Let me put this over here. All right, so we've got 2x plus 2y equals 4, and 2x plus 4y equals 0. So there's our system. I just got it, I got moved the 4 over, just got x and y by itself. So I need to solve this. We can use addition method. So I can multiply this thing by negative 1. So that's going to give me 2x plus 2y equals 
equals 4, and that's negative 2x minus 4y equals 0. And then when I add them together, I'm going to get negative 2y equals 4. So y equals negative 2. And then I'm going to take the I'm going to take the negative 2 and plug it into any of these. I'll, I guess I'll just, I don't know, just plug it into maybe this one, I guess. It doesn't matter. So I get 2x plus 4 times negative 2 equals 0. So that's 2x minus 8 equals 0. 2x equals 8. So x equals 4. So what that does is that gives me the point 4, negative 2. Okay. That is your, uh, that's your point A, B right there. That's, that's what I have to test now to see if it's a relative max or relative min. And that's where these second partials come in. I got to evaluate D. All right. So let's go ahead and what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase all of this stuff so I can come back up here so we can, but hopefully you copied that down. If you didn't just rewind the video so you can copy it down. So I'm going to put my point over here for negative two. All right. So now let's take the second partial with respect to X. So that would be the derivative of this, which would be two. And then let's take the second partial of Z with respect to Y. That's the partial of this with respect to Y, that's four. And then let me take the second partial of Z with respect to X and then with respect to Y. So the partial of Z with respect to X is this. And then I take the partial of this with respect to Y and that's gonna be two. And like I said, if you're struggling uh, on how I'm getting these partial derivatives. You need to go watch the video before this one. That's where I explained everything. Okay, it's assumed you already know how to do it in this video. All right, so what we've got to do now, each of these second partials here, we have to evaluate at this point right here. So I've got to take the point 4, negative 2 and plug it into here. And yes, I know there's not an X or a Y variable in there. But I'm letting you know that you have to take this right here and evaluate it at the point 4, negative 2. Well, there's nowhere to plug it in. It's going to always be 2. And yes, this one's always going to be 4, and this one's always going to be 2. But I'm letting you know, and I think in the, in the next example, we'll have X's and Y's still in here. Okay? But I'm letting you know that you're taking the point 4, negative 2, plugging it in to each one of these. That's why I'm showing this work here. Okay? And yes, I know we're just getting the numbers that we're seeing but I want you to know that we're plugging them in. That equals four. And then this one, evaluated at that point, is equal to two. Okay, so I evaluated each one of these second partials at the point four, negative two. All right, now we can figure out what D is. So D, remember D is equal to the second partial with respect to X times the second partial with respect to Y and then minus the second partial of F with respect to X and then with respect to Y and I wrote the formula down wrong I just noticed that this should be squared okay I just noticed where I did that okay sorry about that all right all right so this is going to be the second partial with respect to x, which is, whoop, change back colors, which is 2 times the second partial with respect to y, which is 4, minus the second partial with respect to x and then y, which that's 2 squared. And this 
is going to give us what does that give us that gives us four all right and and what are we concerned about we're concerned if d is positive or negative we're concerned if the second partial is positive or negative well we can see this is positive and we can see this is positive so what does that mean well let's see so let's see then there is a relative maximum if d is positive and the second partial is negative there's a relative minimum if d is positive which that that's what we have and the second partial is positive okay so this is the one we have so we have a relative minimum so we have a relative minimum at our point four negative two with value now what's the value so we're going to take four negative two and plug it into here so z is equal to i'm sorry net you know four negative two so that's going to be four squared plus two times four times negative two plus two times negative two squared minus four times two and what do I get when I plug all that in? I believe I get negative eight. So with value, negative eight. So there we have it. And, and basically, it's the if you're plotting this three-dimensional coordinates, you would plot the point four, negative two, negative eight. Negative eight would be like your z-axis. Okay. But yeah, there's your... There's your answer to that one. So you can see it's really not that bad. the The thing that you're gonna the thing that you're gonna have the most uh, difficulty with, and you know, as far as an applied calculus class goes, I don't think you're gonna get. I mean, you could get some problems that are tough, but the hardest part on on most of this is gonna be where is it? Oh, I erased it. It's gonna be where we set the first partials equal to zero, and then we have to solve for x and y that's that's probably going to be the most difficult part of the problem i mean that wasn't easy but you can get some that are that are pretty tough all right so we have a computer analysis shows the pressure p in pascals created by a press at each point of a square plate eight centimeters on a side is p equal so let's just write that down P equals 6XY minus X cubed minus Y cubed plus 700. Find the greatest pressure at any point if distances are measured as shown in the figure. All right, so we got this plate, 8 centimeters squared. We're going to do the point zero, 00 at the corner. So we want to, we're basically looking to see if we have a relative maximum, right? All right. So, or find where a relative maximum is. So we're going to have to do just like we did in the other problem. So the only difference is we had what Z equals. Now we got P equals. Okay, we're going to do it the same way. Okay, so we've got the partial of P with respect to X. That's going to be 6Y minus 3X squared. And then all that's zero. And then the partial of P with respect to Y is equal to, what is that, 6X minus 3Y squared. Everything else is zero. Yeah, there we go. All right. So now let's go ahead and set everything equal to zero. So I've got 6Y minus 3X squared equals zero. And I've got... 6x minus 3y squared equals 0. And let's make our life a little easier. Let's write this as 2y minus x squared equals 0. And 2x minus y squared equals 0. Now what did I do there? I just divided it. I divided everything by 3. Just to make everything come out a little nicer. 
All right, so what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this thing and solve it for y. So I get y equals 1 half x squared, right? Move the x squared over, divide everything by 2. And so what we'll do then is we'll take this and plug it in for y into the other equation. And then I can solve for x. I've got 2x minus 1 half x squared squared equals 0. So that's going to be 2x minus, what is that, 1 fourth x to the fourth equals 0. So that will give me 8x minus, is that right? 8x minus x to the fourth equals 0. Factor out an x, that's 8 minus x cubed equals 0. And then x equals 0, or 8 minus x cubed equals 0. And so here I get x cubed equals 8, x equals 2. All right, so I've got, it looks like I'm going to have two different points to look at. All right, so I need, I actually need my, I need to know what x is, and I need, I'm sorry, I got x, I need to know what, what y is. All right, so let's, let's see if we can figure that out. All right, so, so when x is equal to zero, let's take this x value, let's just plug it into here. So that's going to give me two times zero minus y squared equals zero. So that's just y squared equals zero, right? Negative y squared equals zero divided by negative, you get y squared equals zero. So this tells us y equals zero. And then when x equals two, that's gonna give me two times two minus y squared equals zero. So this is y squared equals four, so y equals, and we want the positive two, all right? So, so what I have here to test is I've got the point zero, zero, because when x, when x was zero, we got y to be zero, so there's a point. And then when x was two, we got y to be two. So these are the two points I have to check where there's a possibility of there being a relative max or min, okay? See, in the first problem, we just had one point. See, when we solved it, the solution we got, I mean, the point we got here, we just had one point. And this one, we've got, we've got two points to check out. And so what I'm going to do, all this where I did the solving, you know, make sure you have it copied down, but I'm going to erase all this. Because what do we have to do now? We have to uh, find the second partials. So we'll erase this so we can go back up here and do it. Well, it's not wanting to erase. There we go. All right. All right, so it all it is now is like we're working two separate problems. We're going to test this point and then we're gonna test this point. We'll just do them separate. So I've got the second partial of P with respect to X. All right, so that's gonna be negative six X. And then the second partial of P with respect to Y is equal to negative six Y. And then the second partial of P with respect to X and then with respect to y is six, okay? So what I did to get this one, the partial of this with respect to x, and then the partial of this with respect to y, all right? And, and here, let's, so the first thing, the first one we're gonna do, we're gonna test out the point zero, zero. And let's see, let's see, I'm gonna erase this over here. Let's come over here. Let's test out the point zero, zero. So I've got to evaluate each of these at the point zero, zero. So I've got the second partial of P with respect to X evaluated at zero, zero is equal to negative six times zero, which is zero. And then I have the second partial of P with respect to X, I'm sorry, with respect to Y 
evaluated at zero, zero. Well, that's equal to negative six times zero, which is zero. See, for this one, I took the x coordinate, plugged it in for the zero, which is in the x coordinate, plugged it in for x. And then for this one, I took this zero, plugged it in for y. And then the second partial of p with respect to x, and then with respect to y, evaluated at zero, zero. Well, there's no variable there. We know it's going to always be six. And so this is going to give me D is equal to what? Uh, that's going to be 0 times 0, partial, second partial with respect to X times second partial with respect to Y minus this one squared. So that's going to be negative 36. And we see that's negative. So let's go back up here and see what happens Look at that. If D is negative, there's neither a maximum nor a minimum. So the point zero, zero is out. There's, there's not a max nor a min. So now what we have to do is we have to try the point two, two. And I'm, I'm going to erase this. And let's change this to the point two, two. And let's erase all this. Hopefully you copied it down. I'm just erasing so we can still so we can still see all this up here. I don't want to be down here working it and we can't see what we're doing. All right. So now we've got the second partial of P with respect to X. Evaluated at 2, 2. That's negative 6 times 2, which is negative 12. And then we've got the second, we've got the second partial with respect to Y at the point two, two, which that's going to be negative six, negative six times two, which is negative 12. And then I've got the second partial with respect to X, then with respect to Y, I evaluated it to two, which that's always six. So I've got D is negative 12 times negative 12 minus six squared. And that is, what do we get? D. Is that 108? Let me let me make sure. So that's going to be 144 minus 36. Yeah, 108, which that is positive. All right. So if you remember, D being positive, we got to we got to go up here and look at the second partial, which we can see here that's negative, right? The second partial is negative. So let's go back up here and see. So if so we have a relative maximum if D is positive and the second partial is negative. So we do have a relative maximum. So we have a relative maximum at two two with value. And so we're going to have to take the 2, 2, and we plug it into here. So P equals 6 times 2 times 2 minus 2 cubed minus 2 cubed plus 700. And I believe that equals 708, maybe. I don't know. Let me check. Yes, it's seven. It's seven oh eight. I I just had to double check myself. So with value seven hundred and eight pascals. Okay. So at the point two two, the the relative maximum would be the seven oh eight. So you would have a point here. This would be the point two two, and you would have. P is equal to 708 pascals. 
All right. And so that's that. That's that problem. It, it's basically just uh, finding a relative max min. That's all we're doing. Okay. And you know this one was a little more involved. We had to we had to do a little more work. You know to find our A B our points to test. We had to test two of them. We tested zero zero, which there was no relative max for men there. And then at two two, we saw that there's a relative max. All right, so I hope this video helped. Check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one later.